In this video, I am going to show you how to set up a development environment in no time at all using GitHub and Gitpod, which is an online cloud-based solution. My name is Simran. Let's get started. First, let's head over to GitHub. There will be a repository called Mattermost Gitpod Config. This repository contains scripts that will configure Mattermost projects for use with Gitpod. Clicking the link open with Gitpod in the repository readme will take us over to Gitpod. More specifically, we will be spinning up an instance on Gitpod of an environment for the config repository, which will draw in other Mattermost repositories. You may need to log into Gitpod first with your GitHub credentials, and it might also take some time for Gitpod to load. Now, the interface that comes up might look familiar. It's the VS Code Editor. The rest of this video goes over parts of the interface with the VS Code configuration, but Gitpod also lets you use some JetBrains IDEs as well. Now, let's walk through all the parts we see here on the screen. On the left-hand side, we have a sidebar that includes different views, such as the File Explorer, a search bar, and a place for source control management. In the File Explorer, we see that we have four repositories to work with, Mattermost Gitpod Config, Mattermost Server, Mattermost Web App, and Mattermost Plugin Apps. If you want to work on additional repositories from the Mattermost organization, you can create separate workspaces on Gitpod for them by navigating to that repositories page and prefixing that URL with gitpod.io slash hashtag. If you don't want to keep manually prefixing URLs like this, you can add an extension from Gitpod to either the Firefox or Chrome internet browsers, which will add a button to GitHub, GitLab, or Bitpocket on the repository page, for example, like this. This button does the exact same thing as the Gitpod badges in readme files. Let's return to Gitpod and learn more about what's in the file explorer. The Mattermost server repository is the backbone of the Mattermost project. It is written in the Go language. The Mattermost web app repository hosts the web application client code, and this is written in JavaScript using React and Redux. Finally, the last repository we have is Mattermost plugin apps, which is a plugin that serves as the core of the Mattermost apps framework. It extends the API of the Mattermost server to allow for the creation of integrations. Next, in this bottom half of the screen here, we have a panel with tabs where we can view output or debug information, a place for terminals, as well as errors and other warnings. This panel can also be moved around. Right under this panel, we have the status bar, which has information on the project you've opened and the current file you're editing. Speaking of editing files, this empty space above the panel is where that'll all be happening. You can open a file through the File Explorer and it'll pop up in this space. Now that we've gone over the main parts of the user interface, Let's check out what exactly is happening in the terminals down in this bottom panel area. There are three terminals open, one for each repository apart from the configuration one. The two terminals currently visible are for the server and for the web app respectively. All the text in them is logging that's occurring during setup, and there will be also logging that happens during running. The third terminal is for the plugin apps. The plugin that's in the repository has been enabled, and the environment has been configured to start developing apps. Speaking of the server and web app running, you might have noticed a pop-up tab appear. This is the result of the server and web app working together. You can mess around and create your own test account, and now you can also see what gets impacted by the coding you do. With Gitpod, you don't need to leave your browser to write code. Next up, I'll be showing you how to make your first contribution to Mattermost through writing an end-to-end -end test, from the start, where we'll pick out an issue, all the way to the end, 
where we'll discuss iterating on pull request feedback. Thank you for watching.